Ghostly Entity, and today I have 10 Halloween build hacks from the blurst to the straight up curse that will make you gobble this up and lift your spirits for this season. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe down below, share and comment on this video, and now it is time for us to go. Build 1 is going to be called the Bone Chilling Bridge and there's a reason for that. For about a year now, you players have fallen to this mighty city because of this creature right here. He can sniff your stank from a mouth. But why would you let this place go to waste when you can transform it into your own domain and build a bridge using the skulls you harvested along the way as decoration? To do this, you'll need to have dark oak clocks, campfires, dark oak stairs, spruce trap doors, deep slate stone bricks, mangrove fruits, lantern, a shovel and some skulls. Start by finding a good place to build. I've chosen the pathway to be in reinforced deep slate because there was a rib-like passageway leading up to a worn down bridge that I destroyed prior. Once you have that, place four dark oak logs onto both sides of the bridge, lining the front of them with spruce trap doors. Now, mine's gonna be a fine boy, so I'm going to make the bridge one block apart, but you can always make it more chunky. Next, add the campfires in between the gap using the shovel to extinguish them out, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. After this, add the deep slate bricks, dark oak steps and mangrove roots in an alternating pattern that you like. It can be completely anything. I love using mangrove roots as they also make the appearance of anything look dead. And Wow, now the bridge is done, all you need to do is to add the finishing touches, planting down the skulls and shoving their souls into the lanterns, and ah, uh, isn't that beautiful. Build 2 is going to be called the Western Dragon Walkway. This is because this builds the Western Dragon head lined with razor sharp teeth and a portal so that you can have a walkway to the inferno. Literally. Start by finding a spacious area that is at least 15 blocks high, 20 blocks long and 10 wide. This is a big boy build so it should be treated as such. To do this you will need obsidian, polished blackstone bricks, polished blackstone brick slabs, polished blackstone stairs, dripstone, glowstone and flint and steel. Start by building a typical nether portal. Now, as the nether portal is in the dragon's mouth you should leave some room behind and around to build around it. Next. Build the cheeks of the dragon. Do this by building two circles either side. This may seem a weird place to start, but trust me, think of it as the hinge of the build, where the jaws and the neck will be connected to. Lose small gaps for the eyes, and once that is completed, build the jaws of the dragon, trying to shape them so both parts align with one another. They have to be equal, guys, otherwise you'll have an over and underbite. This can take some time to get it to look right, so take your time. Align the finished jaws with some dripstone varying in size to add some variety. Move on to the neck where I'll create support for the dragon and adding some spikes that run down its spine along with some little ears. Finally, align the inside with some glowstone to illuminate the eyes and the dragon's mouth. And there you go! A scary but cool portal to the inferno. Build 3 is called the Fire Fountain or Blood Fountain if that suits you better. However, this fountain involves neither of those and instead uses some special tipped arrows to do the perfect job because of these particles that they emit. Now, there is a warning since this is using some mechanisms, but don't panic. Stop panicking. It is very easy and I'll walk you through it. We're on a journey together. To build this, you'll need any block. In this case, I'm using a grass block, a redstone compactor, hopper, sticky pistons, a slime block, obsidian, crying obsidian, glowstone, polished blackstone stairs, black carpet, and some tipped arrows. To make the red color, I recommend going with arrows of healing, but you can use any arrows you like. First of all, dig a hole that is three by four blocks and make it two blocks deep. You can make the hole deeper, but it has to be a minimum of two to cover up all the mechanical stuff. Place your sticky piston right here with a slime block on top. This will act as the spring. Make sure that you place the rest of the compactor in this direction as well, or else it will not work. After, get two hoppers and make sure their nozzles are pointing in towards each other and place them in this corner. If you've done everything correctly this far, place a random block in and the sticky piston should be moving. This works because now that all of the redstone part is done, add the obsidian blocks around it on the horizontal planes and the glowstone on the diagonal. This is because you can't put any other blocks in place. This is because if you put any other blocks in then... Once you get 
that out of the way. Add the black carpet onto the glowstone to dull a bit and add a rim of polished black stone stairs to act like a barrier. Finally, shoot the tipped arrows on top of the slime, really layer them on thick for the full effect and there you go! A fountain of nightmares that can get the attention of anybody. Build 4 is called the summoning circle that allows you to contact the dead. Well, not really, but at least it provides some chilling ambience to your area and it is really easy to do so. To build this, you'll need a campfire, a piece of string, nether warp blocks, red carpet, red candles, redstone dust, a wither skeleton or a skeleton skull, and a flint and steel. Start by imagining a 3x3 three three area and in the middle of it, dig down two blocks. Place the campfire in the hole and on top of it, put down the single piece of string. You can see the amount of smoke it emits and I just want to tone it down just a little bit by adding some carpet on top. I'm going to show you actually on the screen now the difference between uh, having the carpet and without. Can you see it? After you finish covering the campfire, surround it with some nether warp blocks. Add the redstone and candles in an alternating pattern just like this, but you can do it however you like. Crown this build off by putting one of your skulls that you've collected, sign a blood pact and then seal it by lighting the candles. And there you go, your own summoning circle. May your summoned creature be loyal, no reflux. Build 5 is going to be called the Witch's Cauldron, which is a live cauldron that bubbles and spits. You can even throw in some magical ingredients and see it brew before your very eyes. It is both easy and amazing to build, so let me break it down to you. To build this, you'll need some soul sand, some slime, a redstone lantern, dark oak trap doors, a water bucket, any building block, and any coloured carpet. I'm going with lime green. Start by finding the middle of a 3x3 three three and dig down 3 blocks. Place the soul sand into the hole afterwards. On the layer above, surround the hole with a layer of slime. This will add some substance to the build when you look down into the cauldron later. On the top layer, place the redstone lanterns on top of the slimes in the same pattern. Now, place the 3 trap doors in this pattern and place your random block right here. Fill the hole up to the top with water and replace the filler block with a trap door. If done right, you pretty much have the basis. To finish up the look, I like to add some lime carpet to make it look as if some of the green slime has escaped. And there you go, you have a full on witch's cauldron brewing away in your lair. Build 6 is going to be called the Eye of Cthulhu. This one only requires 4 items and it is a pretty small build, but you can add as many of them as you like to freak out other people. To build this, all you will need is some weeping vines, a quartz block, an item frame and a conduit. Place the quartz block however high you want. These things typically float so I recommend that it is at least one block off the ground. Depending on what look you are going for, place the weeping vines below the quartz block or behind it. The weeping vines will represent the yummy blood vessels. Once completed, add the item frame which will act as the iris and finally the conduit which will be the pupil. And there you go, a quick and easy build that is pretty terrifying. Build 7 is quite a gruesome one but it is going to be called the hangman, but on the flip side it's illuminative in the dark. This build has very few components and may be a bit of a grind to get but trust me guys, it's worth it. For this build, you'll need some rooted dirt, coarse dirt, dark oak planks, dark oak stairs, dark oak slabs, pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, carved pumpkins, chains, weeping vines, a skeleton and or a wither skeleton skull. Start by clearing a 5x6 area and cover it with an assortment of some coarse and some rooted dirt. The more random, the better. After, use the dark oak plank stairs and the dark oak slabs to create a hanging post. I'm going to go with 5 blocks high but you can honestly do whatever. Once you've finished the post, add the chain below the block and then add the jack-o'-lantern onto the chain. Finish it by adding the weeping vines to really bring it home. The main build is complete but it can do with some more pumpkins around it, not to mention some unlucky souls who are scared to death. And here you go, a build that embodies yet embraces death itself. Build 8 is quite a cute little one and I'm going to call it the Pumpkin Plantation. The name is pretty explanatory but it is an easy and cute way to have your own pumpkin patch in Minecraft that takes little to no time at all. For this build, you'll need some pod soul, spruce fence, pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, carved pumpkins, a green or lime green candle and some sea pickles. 
Start by digging a small area. You can make it as big as you like, but I recommend it should be no more than a 5x5, five five, as it is supposed to be a small patch. After placing the puzzle, place the fence around the perimeter to protect the pumpkins. After, place the pumpkins in a random arrangement. You can do this however you like, but to showcase them best, make sure you can see all of the different varieties of the pumpkins. Once you are happy with the arrangement, add the green candles and the sea pickles as a cute little stork. The final result is both cute and adorable, and as a plus side, it can also illuminate in the dark so there is no need for torches to ruin the build. Build 9 is the classic coffin where you can rest in your coffin allowing you to rise and get your fill. And look how adorable, someone visited your grave and gave you flowers. Such a shame that some of them withered. Ah, rest in peace. Anywho, to build this, you'll need some rooted dirt, coarse dirt, cobblestone wall, cornflowers with the roses, a bed of choice, and a spruce trap door. Start by building your own gravesite by making a 5x3 area, randomizing the rooted dirt and the coarse dirt placement. Dig a 1x2 hole that is one block deep and place the bed in there, covering it with two spruce trap doors. Make sure that the spruce trap doors are placed in the same direction and open the same way so that they line up. Once completed, close the coffin because you're not dead yet and add the gravestone by using the cobblestone wall. Finally, place the flowers around the site and enjoy the rest of your years. Heh, <laughs> what's black and blue and dead all over? Build 10 is called the Fat Pumpkin Patch with a PH of course. Ew. Because this patch is a setup from the pumpkin plantation. This one involves a bit more creativity requiring you to build your own pumpkin and to add some other crops such as wheat to really build up the scene. But trust me, every detail is worth it. For this build, you'll need to have acacia stairs, acacia planks, a sea pickle, any pumpkins of your choice, in this case I'm going to use regular and carved, a water bucket, a spruce trap door, hay bales, some seeds and a hoe. Try to find or make room for an area that is at least a 5x5 five five, and use the acacia stairs and the planks to build up the pumpkin. On top of the pumpkin, add the sea pickle for the stem. To make the bigger pumpkin have company, add the other pumpkins next to it, adding a good variety. After, next to the corner of the pumpkin, dig one hole, fill it with water and add the spruce trap door on top of it. This will act as an irrigation system while slightly covering up from view. Add the hay bales in a random assortment, making sure that you are able to see both sides of the hay bales. Try to shove them into cracks in areas that are hard to reach and finally use the hoe to till the ground planting your little wheat seeds or any if you like. And there you go, a pumpkin patch to behold and bask in the sunlight. And thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment on what your favourite build was and what I should do next. But for now, you could click here and geez, I don't know guys, that pop up on the screen is looking very, very yummy.